Hey guys, welcome to Socket Cluster Scaling. In this video series, we're going to be working with Socket Cluster, I believe it's on 13 right now. And we're going to go over vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, and then uh, just some basic server stuff. So basically, you're going to learn how to scale with Socket Cluster. And hopefully, I'll get to doing it on AWS, so that way uh, you can see a full server online. Okay, so first things first, let's just do a quick uh, example of a single core system so uh, we need to create well let's create let's, let's create a folder so we'll make make directory let's do call it a single we'll go into single npm init um, okay at the, oh at the time of this recording I am on what, what am I on node 8.9 oh, I need to update that node 10's out anyway um, okay so uh, npm install express dash dash save and we're going to use Express for a single test here. There, touch. And I'm not going to build this the way you would normally build a production server. There's no point. But I'm um, okay. So let Express equals require Express. Let app equal Express. And let's uh, do port equals. Let's do 7000 for now. Um, App.listen port and console log server is active okay active on port port just to test we'll run it quick which it's gonna work but there you go server is active okay now we need to have a something we can respond to so we'll do app dot get we'll just grab that one request oops response and then response.json and then we'll pass a packet with ID 1 um, there we go, this should be good enough um, and then you know, we'll just do this just because why not 200, okay so we'll run it again and then we'll split the terminal here like so and we will curl local host 7000 and then of course you don't need that there you go so you see it's up and live now let's do a quick test on sorry, let's, let's try and spike the, spike the system so I'll do touch uh, request sh uh, pseudo change actually I don't think we need change mod make it executable there we go okay um Ben dash oh it's been a bit since I've done this uh, I for I in sequence let's do one uh, one of ten and then do um, done we'll do curl local Post seven thousand. I believe that should work. Let's not doing something. Let's see request. Looking for a matching. Oh, I didn't see the extra. It's probably screaming at me. <laughs> okay, and then there you go. Okay, let's do a thousand of those, and it should spike the system. One of the cores. No, not quite. Okay. Well, let's do this. We'll prove it by saying um, um, pro or PID process.pid. There we go. We'll prove it's only on one core that way. Um, and then. There we go. Let's see, no matter how many times you hit the server, it's all hitting the same same process. Okay, so how do you scale across multiple processes? Well, you can do that with uh, there's multiple packages. Cluster is one of the packages in Express or in uh, NPM you can use, or you can use Socket Cluster to do it. So Socket Cluster gives you the ability to scale uh, vertically 
with the system and horizontally. And by vertical, I mean use all the cores. And so um, you can use Socket Cluster's um, command line interface to do that. So we'll, let's go ahead and do that. And, I'll, and I'll prove to you it actually does use a spin up eight processes because I have an eight core. Okay, so Socket Cluster create multi. Give it a second and it will build for you. You can see it's already starting to build. And give it just a second. Okay, now we need to go into the server file here and we need to pass in. We're just gonna hard we're gonna hard code this into require just for now. OS dot CPU CPUs dot length. There we go. Okay. Then we do multi npm start. We'll see it starts up eight processes, right? Okay, and then we will do uh, go to our request and change it to eight thousand because it's on eight thousand, not seven thousand. And then we'll do this, and you'll see. Oh, I, I didn't create. I didn't create a route. Oops. Uh, we don't need any of this garbage. Um. Request. We'll just, just chop that out real quick. And Socket Cluster does use Express, in case you're wondering. So there we go. And we'll do. Uh, there we go. And we'll close that out like so. And then we'll do this. We'll say, go. Did I not? First off, we don't need Morgan. And. Oops. There we go. And then we should get. And we don't. That's why, because this is already. We'll get rid of this crap here. Um, worker, we don't want to serve any files. There we go. Okay. All right. And then go. You'll see, once this is done, that we're hitting different processes. See that? Different processes. So now we have a system that can scale vertically out of the box with Socket Cluster. Um, and uh, in my other videos, you can go and I have another video series on Socket Cluster itself, and I explain all the configuration and how it all works. But I just want to quick video to show you how to scale vertically. Now, how do you scale horizontally? And what I mean by horizontally and is multiple machines. So let's say, for example, you have a hundred servers, and you want all of them to like round robin the processes, right? Well, Socket Cluster has a load balancer you can use, or you can use something like Nginx, um, which is great. But then let's say, for example, that uh, you have uh, a user connected to this, this, you know, one worker and then another user connected to another worker on another server and you publish an, uh, a message. Well, the other worker is not going to get the information because they're not connected at all. And that's where Socket Cluster's SCC comes in hand. So um, let, let me show you how that works. Okay. So um, I'll show you a um, single server first and then I'll spin up two of them. Um, and that will, and I'll show, and that will show you that um, they don't, they aren't connected at all. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create the server here, like so. Okay, and we're going to create two windows. We're going to say node, and oh, we're in the wrong um, multi, mul multi. Okay, node, let sc equals require socket cluster client. Oh, client, oops, jeez. Um, oh, that's right, gosh dang it. Uh, there we go. Okay, node, let sc equal require socket cluster, cluster client. Okay. Oh. 
Uh, oh man, I'm having a hard day today. Okay, all right. So then we're gonna say um, let sock equal sc dot connect. We're gonna say host name local local host like so, and then we'll say port eight thousand like so. I will say let sock equal sc dot connect um, host name. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna make it look pretty. There's no point. Look a host and uh, port eight thousand. There we go. And here we're gonna say sock dot so, oops sock dot subscribe. To let's say um, we'll say chat room. I know this is not really a chat room, but we'll just do that for now. Watch uh, data console log data. Okay, I'm just gonna copy and paste that real quick over here. Copy and paste and go. Okay, then sock dot publish chat room and then we're gonna say um, message hello world right and they should both get it ah they both got it so when you have one server up you see that the socket connection is shared audio magically right <laughs> for you now what happens if you have two servers let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you that it doesn't actually work so here we're going to say 8001, save that, and then we're going to say npm start. Now we have two servers, and I can send that message again. Like so, you see both guys have it. Now, what happens if this guy over here connects to the 8001? Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we'll say socket subscribe or connect to 8001. And then subscribe to chat room watch. Now watch this, it will not show up. So nothing. Because two separate servers. You know, th this guy here and this guy here. It makes sense. They're not connected. How how would they communicate, right? So SCC is the solution for that. So there's two parts to SCC. There's a state server, which is what you use all you connect all your servers to is a state server. And then the broker is what handles the messaging between the systems. So we need to actually um, create those those servers here. We're gonna do this. We're gonna say, okay, git clone https github.com forward slash socket cluster forward slash scc state. We're just gonna call it state because I don't really wanna type scc out. Get state mpmi. And while that's doing that, we'll do this over here. Git clone HTTPS github.com forward slash socket cluster forward slash SCC broker. Oops. Broker. There we go. Broker MPMI. Going to go over to this server here. And we're going to say um, node server. And we're just going to run that like that. Okay. Listening on port 777. You can go look at the code to see how that works, but anyway uh, and then we'll node server here and we need to pass in these arguments CSS host um, local host and then CSS uh, CSS uh, port 7777 you'll see here it connects did I uh, oh oops I messed that up um, address in use why is it it should not be binding to that port. It should default to eight. And let's, maybe maybe John change it real quick. It's been in, let's see here. Uh, SCC broker. What is yeah? The default port's eighty. Hmm. That's interesting. Why is it taking it? Well, that's okay. We'll just remove that part of the CSS port for now. There we go, connected. Okay, so then uh, the broker's connected. Now, how do we connect these guys to the server here? Well, 
That's pretty simple. There's a, obviously normally in a production environment, you'd use environmental variables. I'm just going to hard code it right here for right now. Um, so we'll say, uh, okay, so we need to close this guy down and close this guy down. And then we'll say um, node server CSSH equals local host like so. And then it should just connect right up. We'll see a connection right here. And go. There, connected. You see there, join the cluster. Okay. And this, oh, we need to switch the port back. Oops. This is why I do everything with environmental variables. I'm just doing a quick, dirty show here. Um, and then node server, like so. You'll see, join the cluster. Okay. So everything should be set up. I think I, didn't I? Oh, CSS H equals localhost. There we go. Now it joins the cluster. Okay, so we'll have this guy. So we'll say that, let's just close out this completely, and I'll show you. Um, okay, so I'll show you the actual working. So we have socket connect to eight thousand, which actually I messed up on the ports. Is over here. Doesn't really matter. The idea is the same. And then um, subscribe. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing here. Node. So cluster connect to 8001, right? Yep. And then subscribe. And you'll see over here, this guy will publish. And they should both get it. And they do. And if you want to see how the, the, how the, um, how the broker is actually doing what it's doing, uh, I'll show you that. So we'll go to the broker here. We'll open it up. Go to the server here, and we'll say log level three. We're just gonna we're just gonna hard code it for now, okay? And we're gonna close this guy down. It's gonna say error. Oh no! There we go. Okay, and it should connect right back up. This guy. Oh, I think I think I have to restart these. No, oh, no, no! I messed it up. Okay, um, okay, 8,000. So let's show it's connecting. There we go. And then server up top here, we change this to 8,001. Oh, I, just, oh, I need to use I need to use the argument. I didn't think about that. That's okay. Um, and then here, okay, connected. Now we'll push this down here. We'll show that it should. Oh, I need to connect. Gosh, Dan. Okay. Um, node. Socket. 8,000. Subscribe. Okay. And you see, look up here. Subscribe to chat room. Okay. Node. And click 8,001. Subscribe. And we will publish. Boom. They both got it, see? And you see a log it actually did publish using the broker. So that is horizontal scaling with socket cluster. And if you want to connect both these servers here, you use something like Nginx, and, or, well, use whatever you want. Um, uh, I prefer Nginx. And you connect these two guys, these two guys, or, you know, the multiple cluster with uh, a, a, in, in an Nginx load balancer, or you can do auto-scaling with, like, AWS has auto-scaling, so you could just publish one server and then based on the CPU usage or whatever terms you use, scale scale up or scale down. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But anyway, that's vertical scaling and horizontal scaling with socket cluster. And I believe this is socket cluster 13, oh, 13, 13, 13. Oh, why am I missing it? Yes, 13. So this is horizontal scaling and vertical scaling with socket cluster 13. If you guys like this video or are interested in more, please let me know and I can post on how to do it in production like AWS and do it the right way instead of fiddling with these environmental variables and whatnot and arguments. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.